we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. Strap on your boots, fasten your woolliest hat and dust off those skis. Because in this episode, we've tracked down some of the greatest winter holiday videos. From building your own enchanting frozen snow globe, to giving your bike a winter-friendly budget makeover, and punching frost out of a window. So if you prefer Siberia to the Seychelles, you're going to want to pay attention. I think everyone likes snow. Who doesn't like snow? Train drivers, taxi drivers, camels. Quite a few of us, actually. Join us in a real winter wonderland as we show you some extreme winter sports, ingenious cold weather tips and snow dogs. Because it wouldn't be a collection of entertaining videos without at least a couple of dogs, would it? I don't know how much fun dogs usually have in the snow, but this dog looks like it's having quite a lot of fun. And later at Hack HQ, we're going to show you an epic hack for when your winter getaway gets super icy. You won't want to miss that. <laughs> OK. Stay vigilant, people. We're starting with what could become the greatest winter holiday sport in history. Watch and learn. Get up! Yes! Oh, yeah! Another <laughs> And the wife is not happy. <laughs> With the impending global warming and extreme weather conditions, we're going to have to adapt our sports to the environment. And this, this guy, these people are just staying ahead of the curve. Not sure his wife would agree with you, George. So whilst you might imagine that water can be very fast moving, snow can actually also move very fast in the form of an avalanche. And we know that snow in an avalanche can move up to about 160 kilometers an hour. This hack works because there's very low friction between the undersurface of the kayak and the snow, because snow is a very low friction substance. Which means that an object such as the kayak can move across it very easily. Which is very lucky for idiots everywhere. This hack doesn't help anyone and doesn't solve any problems, but it'll definitely add a lot more fun to your winter break. It's a hit! Have you ever wanted to build your own winter holiday home? Eskimo style? You have? Well, this next video shows you just how to do that. Well, kind of. You let Mother Nature take care of business. Next thing you know, it's covered up and your little one's gonna let the fun begin. They're gonna have a good time. It will stay nice, toasty, dry on the inside, make a little clubhouse. They will remember this igloo all their life. It's actually pretty difficult to forecast when it's going to snow because we need to know very precise data about the temperature of the air and the temperature of the ground. Anna, you should be a weather presenter. You'd be the only one who's ever told the truth. To be honest, I think like real igloos are much more impressive. But hey, I'm not judging. Sounds a lot like you are judging, Ali. An expert igloo builder can put up an igloo in about an hour's time, which is very short, but also you probably don't want to spend too long in the cold building your igloo before you get inside. I'd love my job description to be expert igloo builder. I remember trying to make an igloo when we were children, but it was London and it was very poor snowfall. And we managed to make one course of bricks and then we'd use that all the snow. Ordinarily, building a shelter out of snow may not seem like the smartest idea, unless you want to turn up the heat on your winter holiday antics. So how can something as cold as, well, ice, keep you warm as toast? The secret is in the bricks and mortar. Igloos are made from very tightly packed snow, which contains lots of tiny air pockets, a great insulator. 
they're more akin to a Roman amphitheatre inside, although people tend to dress far less provocatively in an igloo. Anyway, with impressive tiered levels, people sleep at the top and the cold air sinks conveniently to the bottom. Just don't roll out of bed. Finally, it's all about the period features. An open fire is an absolute must. Just don't forget the smoke hole, otherwise you might suffocate to death. Better or worse than freezing, we'll let you decide. This attempt, though, is basically a flimsy tent covered in snow. I'm just not so sure what impressed fellow holidaymakers on the slopes. It's a miss. This clip proves that despite freezing cold temperatures, it's still possible to pursue the more traditional forms of recreation off-piste. This impressive hack is the result of a lot of patience. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Honestly, it's coming, I promise. I really appreciate the existence of such a tiny fishing rod. Or is it a small rod? Is he actually a giant man and that's a giant fish? Worth investigating further. It really isn't, George. In fresh water, fish tend to go to the very bottom of frozen lakes and rivers. And weirdly, this is where the warmest water is. At first, a tiny rod catching a big fish looks cool. But sitting on a slab of ice for hours on end while the rest of your mates hit the slopes isn't my idea of a holiday. It's a miss. Coming up at Hack HQ, Stephen learns about the states of water during cooling and freezing. <laughs> wow. Before Mike fires up his flamethrower for his epic hack to DI your car in winter. We'll be back in a minute. I'm just off to call the insurance people. So far, we've shown you how to kayak through the snow to your very own igloo before heading inside to catch yourself some dinner. You didn't think we'd stop at three, though, did you? Turns out the internet is full of people who love winter holidays. Parenting is tough, so if you've just had an adrenaline fueled day on the slopes, you probably want to chill instead of struggling with your child's snow boots. <laughs> One moment. Here's a hack that will save time and stress when you finally get off piste. <laughs> This dad has done a job that normally takes around 73 hours in about one second and managed to keep his daughter highly amused at the same time. This is most definitely a hit. A snow globe is the classic winter holiday memento. But if, like most of your fellow Earthlings, they also remind you of a different kind of smashing winter break, this next video shows you how to really quickly make a replacement next time disaster strikes. Bubbles themselves don't last very long normally, so you need it to freeze fast. We're looking at about minus 20 degrees Celsius to get it to freeze all over. You've got a layer of water trapped between two layers of soap. And what happens is that water freezes before it can evaporate. It's one of nature's phenomenons that when it happens, it's brief and it's spectacular. Our hackers show you how to make a snow globe from a frozen bubble. But when it comes to the more traditional snow globe and one that lasts a bit longer, there's a secret to making them come to life. It's not just snow and water in there, it's a mysterious mix of ethylene glycol, that's antifreeze to you and me, and water. Oh, and the snow? That's soap flakes or plastic. Makes you feel all Christmassy, doesn't it? Having a mixture of water and antifreeze means the liquid inside your snow globe has a higher viscosity or thickness, which slows the fake snow down. As gravity pulls it down, this gives the snow globe its wondrous quality, and it's slow enough for oohs and ahs from delighted children. Our clip is more of an ice globe than a snow globe, but we like to think just as impressive. It's a definite hit. Good news, car owners. Want to know a quick trick to removing ice from your car windows? Beat them into submission. Glass actually doesn't conduct heat very well, so it's going to get cold more easily. The second thing is that also to do with moisture. So we're going to have much more moisture that builds up on the glass, which can freeze into ice. Other liquids that you can use to de-ice your car are other liquids that have a lower freezing temperature than water. A good example is vodka or alcohol. So if you don't have any de-icer, you can always use a bottle of vodka on your car instead. Not very cost effective though. This looks cool, but if you want to avoid the risk of breaking your car windows and your fingers, probably not the most effective way to de-ice your car. So it's gonna have to be a very impressive miss. 
now, if the novelty of de-icing with your fists has finally worn off, let us whisk you away to Hack HQ so you can learn a little bit of science behind the art of antifreeze. Mike. Stephen. So, there's your ice. What are you doing getting me to get you ice? It is freezing out there. That's not helping. It's cold, but it's not cold enough. Oh. I've got this water and I need to cool this down to sub-zero because today's hack is all about winter holidays and in particular ice and how to get rid of it. I'm assuming you don't mean just throwing this in a hot bath. I'm assuming you mean defrosting like freezers and car windscreens. Exactly right. We all know that ice is a big problem and water freezes at zero degrees. So if I put this in here, with the thermometer, I can see that that is under zero degrees at the moment. Now you can add chemicals to it, like, like salt, which will reduce the freezing point of the actual water. As the salt forces the ice to melt, the bonds that are holding the molecules together are broken and released as heat energy. And as that heat leaves, the remaining ice gets colder. Right, look at that. That's instantly down to minus 16, minus 18. Wow. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Brilliant. So that's why salt is such a good de-icer. That's right, Stephen. When salt is added, it makes salty water on the top of the ice. And that salty water needs to be much colder to freeze. This means the ice keeps melting, but can't freeze back again. Also, we're left with all this super cold water. What can we do with that? Actually, that's super cold water. Thank you, Stephen. And at minus eight degrees Celsius, this salty water is the perfect Baltic temperature to super cool some pure water for Mike's next parlor trick. Now, at the moment, there's no impurities in this water and there's nothing for the ice to form around. It needs an activation site, so it needs a tiny little bubble for it to freeze around, cause a little ice crystal. How do we do that? By hitting it. <laughs> wow. Did anyone see that? Transparent water in a transparent bottle turned to a very, very, very slightly less transparent ice. Eyes like a hawk, me. That's amazing. So how does hitting that turn it into ice? Just in case you didn't believe him the first time. Right, so it created a tiny little air bubble that then formed a crystal of ice around it, which then propagated like a domino effect through the entire bottle. Amazing. Turning it all into ice. Incredible. Okay, another way to show you this. Super cooled water. Put some ice on the table. I'm very careful of opening this. Pour this super cooled water onto the ice. Pouring the super cooled water onto the ice works a bit like tapping it to make a bubble. The ice cube creates a place for new ice crystals to grow and they form super fast. Oh. They instantly turn back into ice. That's incredible. OK, boys, enough fun and games. It's time to get to our epic winter holiday hack. So our winter holiday hack is going to be about removing ice using salt. No, we're going to go one better than salt. And for that, we need some serious firepower because we're going to be de-icing a car in seconds. Join us later for the epic hack, which definitely deserves the label epic. Wait and see. Things are about to get very heated. So far on our Winter Holidays episode, we've seen the quickest snow boot removal on Earth, the coolest ice removal on Earth, and the prettiest snow globes on Earth. But don't leave the planet just yet, because coming up, we have dogs on ice. Need I say more? Now, what's cuter than a husky puppy? A husky puppy that can entertain itself in the snow while you sit back and enjoy your favourite winter tipple, of course. Training this pup to pull the sled back up the hill is impressive, but let's see how easy going he is when he's grown into a wolf-sized winter predator. I don't know how much fun dogs usually have in the snow, but this dog looks like it's having quite a lot of fun. Huskies actually have two different coats of fur, which actually make them very well adapted to cold conditions. Huskies also have lots of fat reserves in their skin, and that's great because fat is extremely energy dense. It holds a lot of energy. So by siphoning off energy very slowly from those reserves, they can keep their body temperature up and keep moving for ages and ages and ages. I've got about seven coats and I still can't handle the cold. This both saves physical effort for the owner and increases time spent looking at dogs in tiny snow sleds. So obviously, this is a massive hit. If you ever find it difficult balancing your favourite winter holiday sport with your responsibilities as a pet owner, this video is just for you. This time it's the dog who has his humans very well trained. Dogs have an amazing evolutionary adaptation to deal with the cold in their feet. 
Why don't we have that? Nature could be so cruel. To be honest, dogs are a bit better designed on walking on snow than us humans are. Dogs have a special system built into their paws, which is amazing. What they have is a way of pooling blood in the bottom of their feet. And blood is warm, so that keeps their feet from reaching zero degrees. Another reason dogs are better than humans. A way to impress your fellow holiday makers on the ice in the company of man's best friend. It's got to be a massive hit. If you like riding your bike in snow, then you're already far braver than I will ever be. And you deserve a tip. So here we go. Before you go online to order those snow tyres, check your kitchen drawers and try this hack out first. With just a few strategically placed cable ties on its tyres, you can turn your humble push bike into an all-terrain winter holiday beast. This hack works by increasing the surface area of the tyre using cable ties. The theory behind this is that by increasing the surface area, you increase the grip between the surface of the tyre and the ground. If you put the plastic ties around the tyre, then you're creating more of this friction because it's got something to grab onto, which means that it can pull the object across the ice more easily. I wonder if you can get big enough ones to go on car tyres. I suppose you can. I might even try it next time there's snow. Uh, I think it'll be safer for everyone if we stick to using bikes for this hack. Thank you, George. After a couple of silly ones, this one is actually very sensible and very useful. Just be careful with those scissors. Hit! So cable ties on wheels decrease your chances of falling off a bike in the snow. If you want to massively increase your chances, though, have a look at this next video. For people who love the thrill of skiing, but also like the comfort of sitting down, this bike-ski combo could be for them. This would certainly make the commute to Santa's Grotto more interesting. I really like this one, because um, I'm a cyclist, but not a skier. Like, he's not going to win any awards for speed, but it goes, doesn't it? This is ingenious. I've done the same thing with my car. I've glued a big tea tray to each of the tyres, and, uh, and it works just as well. Can someone check George's driver's licence, please? Quick! The reason skis slide in snow is because the pressure they put on the snow actually generates a little bit of energy, enough to melt the very top layer. What you end up with is the compacted icy layer below and a fine lubricating layer of water. This means the ski slides nicely over the top. Two of the most dangerous pastimes combining into one mode of winter holiday transport on the most hazardous terrain known to man. Yeah, all right then, a hit. Now the time has come to head over to Hack HQ to see, if we dare, what Mike has planned. Armed with a workshop, a human guinea pig and a can-do attitude, Mike is committed to putting any and every hack to the test so we can stand a safe distance back and learn from him. Here we go. Earlier at Hack HQ, we saw how water can be carefully stored and returned to solid state and learned why salt is used for de-icing roads. Now, though, it's time to give de-icing the epic treatment as Mike and Stephen head out into the field again. You might want goggles for this one. So this is my ultimate car de-icer. Wow, well, it looks like a normal car-ish. What's all this? Apart from all these little things, yeah. So these are my flame projectors. Flame projectors? Flame projectors. They're going to shoot flames, eight metres worth of flames, directly at that windscreen, de-icing that instantly. I guess it's just a lot colder than it looks where they are, cos I can't see any ice. When Mike wants to play with a flamethrower, though, he'll make anything up to get what he wants. OK, eight metres of flames. Yeah. De-icing this. Seems a little bit over the top. This is better than salt? Far better than salt. It does it instantly. So, how does it work? OK, so this all runs on propane gas. Propane. The propane's fed through these pipes. We have a pilot flame here, which produces a little flame yeah. with the propane. Right. Which then, in turn, through the solenoid valve, ignites the big jet of propane. OK, so the pilot flame is making the bigger flame come out, but what's the solenoid valve then? The solenoid actually switches it. So this opens up a valve that lets all that propane at high pressure come out bursting out that window. OK, bursting sounds dangerous, but this is going to be better than salt, is it? So much better than salt. This would do it in seconds. However, it won't lower the temperature of the ice. The ice is definitely there. Hmm, right, Mike. Right. So it may freeze again quite quickly. 
Oh yes, because it's so cold there, I'm getting chills just looking at them. Um, Which means we'll get to the experiment all over again. Absolutely. Should we do it? Yeah, fine. Here? This, this way, much further away. Right. Right, so I just need to go and light the pilot flames. OK. And get onto it. I'll stay here. You, you stay there. Right, they're all lit. OK. You ready for this? Instant de-icing. Well, let's get the car ready for the road. Right, three, two, one. <laughs> OK. And it has. It's cleared the windscreen. It's cleared the windscreen completely in seconds. I'll be honest with you, I thought it was going to crack it. Well, me too, to be honest. And I tell you, if it was a couple of degrees lower, it could well have cracked it. That change in temperature with the heat going on the windscreen is exactly why you shouldn't pour hot water onto it. It can crack it instantly. Oh, OK. I, one time, I'd have wished it was a little bit colder. Do you want to go? I'd love to have a go. <laughs> I feel so much warmer myself. I mean, the windscreen wipers are on fire, but apart from that, <laughs> it seems like a really good solution. I think you left the gas on. Right, should we go and turn that off? Right, let's just turn the pilots off. Now, you've got to admit, that was the ultimate in winter holidays hacks. It cleared the windscreen in seconds. I will admit, the windscreen is fine and it's clear, and I thought it might have popped out. That might need to polish out slightly. Think that might affect the resale? I don't think anyone noticed that. No, no. So the key thing here is we've solved an age-old problem of clearing windscreen in seconds. Why do it with ice or anything else? Just use flames. I'll admit, iced up windscreens are a standard winter problem, and this is a fabulous winter holiday hack. But for me, Mike, in the future, I'll stick to the icer. How boring. There you have it, an epic solution to a very boring problem. And that brings the icy shutters down on our Winter Holiday Hacks episode. So wrap up warm and remember to join us next time for more amazing tips, science and hacks to get you through life. <laughs> <laughs>